This is executive video of cystic craniopharyngioma navigation guided aspiration and permanent placement of reservoir in the cyst. This 25 years adult male presented with progressive diminution of vision, both the eyes and two episodes of seizures. Examination showed his glossocoma score 15, vision finger counting at the distance of 4 feet, both eyes and eyes showing bilateral primary optic atrophy and bitemporal hemianopia. He was investigated with CT scan brain and MRI scan brain which showed large cystic craniopharyngioma extending into subfrontal region and suprasellar region and subchiasmatic region with a significant pressure on the both the optic nerves and optic chiasm and lifting the optic chiasm entering into the pressure on the third ventricle and entering into third ventricle and pressure on the hypothalamus as shown in these CT scan and MRI images, the extent of the cyst. He was taken up for surgery. He underwent right frontal parasagittal pre-coronal hole and navigation guided cyst aspiration and permanent placement of the catheter inside the cyst with reservoir and radiation. These are the steps of surgery. First, the registration is done with the navigation and the dimensions and the location of the cysts are recorded and marked. And the access from the surface to the cyst are calculated and located the appropriate point on the forehead. This is the point of entry which is planned on the right side because cyst was extending onto the right side subfrontally and para median. These are the steps of, of access point location to the cyst and we prefer to go from the para median about one to one and a half inches laterally accessing the cyst because the optic chiasm and optic nerves and the anterior circle of villis is located in the midline on the surface of the cyst. If you go to midline, we may, act, we may injure the optic chiasm and optic nerves. It's always better to access the cyst laterally, la anterolateral wall of the cyst going inside. Navigation planning will give us this safe and comfortable location of the entry. This is the entry point on the right side of the midline. And once the part is painted and draped, again, we, we navigate and locate the point of entry into the cyst wall from the surface before we place an incision and plan the trajectory to the cyst. This is the, the burr hole is made. And now extradurally again, we act, we, we plan the trajectory to the cyst. Dura is opened in a, a cruciate manner after placing the burr hole. Now, once a dura is opened, again, we navigate the point of entry because here the access or the track to the cyst needs to be in one line because once we go inside we can't change it and moving the moving the catheter inside the brain may injure the white fibers and the important structures so the access point needs to be very accurate and that is planned or or, or decided before only on the navigation as shown here once we, we plan the, the track which is fixed in that, the catheter is, is placed onto the ventricular probe and now we are ready to enter the brain the, uh, along with the track which we have planned to enter the cyst and to place the tip of the catheter for the continuous aspiration. The track which we have planned, the catheter enters exactly the same track and navigation guides us along with the 
track and the tube is progressed inside the brain and reaches the cyst wall and enters the cyst wall. The depth of the cyst from the surface of the skull or the scalp is 8.5 centimeters. Now we have entered the cyst and hit the cyst at the depth of 8.5 centimeters as shown here and the images on the monitor also confirm the cyst. Now the, the, the ventricular probe is removed after hitting the cyst and entering the cyst and confirming on navigation the, per, the, the perfect positioning of the ventricular, the, the cyst catheter inside the cyst cavity and the navigation confirms the location of the cyst and the catheter inside the cyst as shown here. Every step of the procedure millimeter by millimeter when we enter inside it is navigated so that brain is not injured at all. Now you see the catheter is inside the cyst and this is the navigation track which we entered inside the cyst. Now you see the progression of the blue line that is the catheter tip which goes inside the cyst and the wall of the cyst will be calcified and firm. One needs to use little force to break the cyst wall and enter into that. Now you see the there is a thick greenish yellowish fluid that is a craniopharyngioma fluid which is accessed and coming out under pressure from the cyst wall. Gently with a 2 cc syringe the cyst fluid is aspirated as you see here. The suction force used here should be very slow and gentle. We should not use more force. Gently it should be aspirated. Now you see still the fluid is coming out by itself under pressure. With it again you we aspirate the cyst and again the aspiration procedure is very slow and gentle as shown here. And as we keep aspirating the cyst keeps reducing its size and collapsing and till the aspiration is done and when we try to aspirate the last time the fluid doesn't come once that happens we should not use the force to aspirate now you see almost we have got more than about 25 ml of fluid from the cyst thick yellowish greenish fluid in literature it is mentioned as the motor oil colored fluid the greenish thick and yellowish fluid we got almost about 25 to 30 ml of cyst fluid as shown here now once that is done probably this is the last about 10 ml 5 ml of the fluid is aspirated and it stops coming. As I mentioned to you earlier, once it stops coming, we should not use force to draw the fluid. That may cause suction effect on the capsule and may lead to extra capsular hemorrhage outside the capsule which is beyond our reach and which is not good for the patient and it may be problematic. So once that happens, aspiration is done, then the excess tube is cut and the reservoir is connected to the cyst catheter as shown here and tied and anchored to the galea. Now the reservoir is snugly pushed and connected to the cyst catheter. This is very important step in a long run. 
not to dislodge the cyst catheter from the reservoir if we don't anchor well and snugly the catheter may get pulled inside the brain due to the brain pulsations and it may get dislodged so once it's connected the reservoir and the catheter are tied with the thread and it's anchored to the galea as shown here that is the reservoir and catheter cyst catheter are tied with three knots as shown here and it is placed on the burr hole and the burr hole is smaller than the reservoir so that it, it sits snugly as shown here onto the burr hole and inside the scalp. Now once that is done again we would like to aspirate and see the tip has been inside the cyst cavity. Now you see with the two syringe, the dome of the reservoir is aspirated and the, the return what we got is very little but it is yellowish greenish fluid suggestive of there is no cyst fluid left everything is aspirated and the catheter is inside the cyst that is that is the confirmation from the all three angles we aspirate center and all the quadrants and confirmed the catheter tip is in the cyst cavity now the reservoir is anchored to the galea and scalp closed in two layers this is his post-op clinical status on day two no neurological deficits is headache has come down and he is taking orally and he is quite happy and shifting out of the ICU. Same day evening we get a CT scan brain done to see the cyst contents and the catheter tip. They are perfectly in place and catheter has gone through the frontal horn and cyst has completely collapsed and ventricles are normal. This is his clinical status when he came back for follow-up after three weeks, independent, attending to his day-to-day -day activities and perfectly normal. And the scan repeated at that time after th three weeks when he came for follow-up. The cyst is completely collapsed. Catheter is perfectly placed in the cyst wall. Ventricles are normal. He will go for radiation and post radiation we keep repeating a scan every six months if the recurrence of the cyst is there we keep aspirating it. This, our this is our neuroanesthesia neuro team our presence online with more than 445 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative, operative procedural videos online on youtube at last thank you very much for viewing